It is unclear whether DC Comics acquired Jack Kirby for the merit of his work or as a strategy to weaken their rivals at Marvel. But for Kirby, this was no rebound love affair. As artist, editor, and writer, Kirby would at last voice his own work, an entire line of it, on which he was eager to experiment with new publishing formats, new genres, and most vitally, stories that could challenge the perpetual tidiness of the superhero status quo. Yet for all the stars in his eyes, Kirby knew his new bosses wanted his boots firmly on the ground. He decided his first job would be the only existing DC title that wouldn't steal anyone else's. With its cloning labs and tiny monster movie worshipping planets and Don Rickles cameos, Kirby's Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen would plant the odd, inventive, and experimental seeds of his new gods. But Superman's inclusion meant oversight. The faces redrawn to match the corporate model were the first of many frustrating bureaucratic paper cuts. Still. With three more interwoven bi-monthly titles to add to his fourth world saga, he didn't have time to bleed. In The Forever People, Kirby saw the new teen gods he'd envisioned to replace the pantheon of Thor find new life. In Mr. Miracle, he channeled his feelings of confinement to the comics industry through an exiled new god royal turned escape artist, and his love for his wife Roz through the inconquerable Big Barda. But perhaps most importantly, there was new gods. With this Ragnarok finally realized, Kirby consolidated, entangled, and re-envisioned the very nature of good and evil. Raised in the paradise of New Genesis as the greatest weapon of a peaceful society, his Orion is the secret son of great and terrible Darkseid, a haunted outcast forced to hide his true face in nature, a soldier whose capacity for war is both a grim burden and a violent thrill. If Captain America was how Kirby prepared for war, Orion was how he intended to reckon with it. Unshackled, uncut, direct from the source, Kirby delivered an abstracted, operatic visual and written language, designed to somehow both distill and transcend reality, the cosmic Kirby enthusiasm to the fantastic force Seinfeld. For some, the fourth world is almost too imaginative, too inventive, and as Kirby would soon find out, too ambitious.